Uh, I do want to say thank you to all of you for turning in your homework. I have one person that didn't turn in their homework last night, and that makes my life so much easier. Okay, so I really do appreciate you guys getting that done. Zoomers, thank you. Remote only, thank you. Um, again, makes my life so much easier for you guys to do that. So today we're going to work on multiplying rationals, and guys, this is super simple. So again, if you can factor, you're good to go. It's the same concept as yesterday, just we have multiple sets of fractions. So what you're going to do is you're going to look, and I say up and down first and then diagonally. So here's what you want to look at. Look at each individual fraction first. Look at this very first one. Is there anything I can do to this first one to simplify it? I can mark out the three. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So then look at the second one. Is there anything I can do to it? Four and six reduced to what? Two and three. So now what I have left is a P squared. You can put over one. I'm just doing it for, for looks more than anything. And then I have a 2P over three. The next thing you want to do is look diagonally. Is there anything on this top and this bottom that will reduce or anything on this top and this bottom that will reduce? This one doesn't have anything. So then you just squish them together. So what is P squared times 2P? Two 2P two cubed. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom, one times three. Three. Did I mark any variables out? Did I leave anything in the bottom, variables in the bottom? No. So today, all we're really going to work on is simplifying those expressions, but still kind of use the same concept. If there's anything you mark out or anything left, this one doesn't ask you. The directions do not ask you to state the excluded values. Just don't forget about them, okay? Don't forget about them. So this one is done. All right, if we look at our next one, anything in the first fraction, again, you're just going to kind of cover this up and look at the first fraction. Anything in the first fraction that will reduce, top to bottom? No. Is there anything in the second fraction? No. So now we go diagonal. Will 9 and 3 reduce? Yes. So it reduces to 3 over 1, or that 3 cancels out. If we look the other way, 4 and 5x squared, nothing will cancel out there. So we're simplified as much as possible. Push it together. What's 3 times 4? On the bottom, 5x squared times x cubed. Five x squared times x cubed. Five x to the fifth. Thank you. Five x. Yeah, perfect. Is everybody good? That's it. That's all you're doing. So just reducing as much as possible. It gets a little bit easier when you start getting into factored forms because all the parentheses or whatever. So if you have the same parentheses on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter which fraction it's in. So look on the top and bottom of both. So what I tell most of my students is just make this one big fraction bar. Don't worry about the multiply. And is there anything the same on the top and the bottom? It doesn't matter which top or which bottom. K minus, nine. K minus nine and K plus four. What would those call? Holes. holes. Those would be holes. We're not trying to find them. I just want to remind you. Where would those holes be at? Look at it one more time. Eight four, and four and nine. Good. Don't forget to change those signs. Okay. When we finish, there's nothing else I can reduce. We have seven K squared times K minus seven. And that's your final answer. That is the simplified form. There's nothing in the denominator. So we don't have any asymptotes. All right. And again, these are the easy ones because they're already factored in a minute. You're going to have to factor them and make them look like these. Okay. So it's just trying to get you introed into it. So look at number four. Again, you can just extend this fraction bar all the way across. Is there anything on the top and the bottom that's the same? x plus 4 and x minus 9. There is nothing else the same. So we just squish it together. What do we leave on the top? x plus 6 and x plus 7. And on the bottom, we had x plus 1. Where are our holes? 
Negative four and nine. Where is our vertical asymptote? Negative one. Perfect. Everybody good? Again, I don't need you to write them down. It's just asking you to simplify. Look at your next one. What's the same on the top and the bottom? 3x plus 10. X minus 5. Three X. Anything else? What did we leave? Five. And it's five on the top, so it's just a whole number. Where are my holes? Negative ten thirds. Good. Positive five and one more. Zero. Perfect. Everybody good. All right, next one. Now we have to factor ourselves. So anything you can factor, what I would do is factor everything you can first and then mark out. So look at the top of the first fraction. Is there anything I can factor out of that? 3A leaves me with A plus one. And I just go ahead and mark this out so I'm not looking at it anymore. I can't factor 3A. I can't factor A minus two. I usually just put parentheses around it and I can't factor A plus one. So I just put parentheses. So we've factored as much as we can. Now we cross out. What can we cross out? A plus one. Anything else? 3A. Leaves me with? A minus, two. A minus two on the top. So it's like a whole number, no fraction. Where's my holes at? Negative one and zero. Okay. They do get longer. I don't want to say they get harder. Again, it's just like yesterday. If you have to factor, if we have to use slide divide, that's a, the hardest ones that you're going to have to do. They're long. They're not really that hard. All right. Factor the top. Factors of 70 that add to negative 17. Negative seven and negative 10. And again, what I say is I'll just mark these out so I'm not looking at it anymore. I can't factor n plus two. I cannot factor one. I cannot factor n minus seven. So I just throw them in parentheses to remind me that they have to stay together. What can I mark out? N seven. What's that called? Out. A whole at seven. Anything else I can mark out? So what do I have left on the top? N minus 10. Do I have to put the one? No. On the bottom? What's that called? A vertical asymptote at? Negative two. Perfect. That's it, y'all. So it's the same exact thing we did yesterday. Okay, you just have two that you're working with. Uh, when we get to divide, same exact thing. Okay, it's going to be the same thing for a couple of days. When we get to add and subtract, it's a little bit different. So Monday will be, uh, Tuesday will be a little bit different. All right. Look at number eight. Factor of the top, factors of 21 that add to 10. Negative 21. On the bottom, 3n will not factor. It can stay there. 1 will not factor. n plus 7 will not factor. What can I mark out? That causes a what? A hole at negative seven. On the top, the only thing I have left is n plus three. On the bottom, I have three n. None of that can cancel out. Okay, don't try to don't try to cancel the threes out or try to cancel the n's out. They don't work. Okay. However, I do have a vertical asymptote where zero. Perfect. All right. Number nine, you're just doing more factoring. Y'all, again, it doesn't get any harder than this as long as you know your factors, okay? So it gets longer because you have to do slide and divide, but it doesn't get harder. Factors of negative 90 that add to one. 10 and 8 or 9. 10, negative 9, this one's done. How can I factor the bottom of that one? Take out a nine. What's that leave me with? R plus eight. That's perfect. So I'm gonna mark that one out. It don't matter anymore. Factors of 24 that add to 11. 
8 and 3, so r plus 8, r plus 3. Factors of negative 27 that add to negative 6. Negative 9 and positive 3. And then anything the same on the top and the bottom, we're going to mark out. So what can I mark out? R plus 3. R plus 3. What else? R minus 9. R plus 3. Anything else I can cancel out? What is my leftover? On the top? On the bottom? Where are my holes? Nine, negative three, negative eight. Do I have any vertical asymptotes? No. Is everybody good? That's it. Anything hard? Y'all okay? All right. Look at number 10. What's weird about this one on the top? It is a perfect square, but what's weird about it? It's backwards, right? So do you, you guys remember how to flip it around? Change the sign. We pull out a negative one. So I'm going to put a negative 1, and that'll change it to p squared minus 81. So it's what you're normally seeing. So this is done. And then how do I factor p squared minus 81? p plus 9 and p minus 9. And then I'm done with this. And I don't want to mark it all the way out so you guys can still see it. So just the stuff on top is what I'm looking at. Factors of negative 54 that add to 3. Nine and negative six. Okay, so that one's done. P minus six will not factor because it's a singular P. Factors of negative 36 that add to five. Nine and four. What kind of nine? Negative nine. Negative nine, positive four. Okay. Tell me what we can mark out. P minus 9, P minus 6, P, minus six. P, plus P plus 9. What did that leave me with on top? Negative, Negative 1. On the bottom? That's it, guys. That's all you're doing. Where did I have uh, holes at? 6, six. Negative, nine. Negative 9, and? Negative Be careful. Nope. Holes. Everything that I marked out. Positive and negative nine and positive six. Now, where's my asymptote at? Negative four. Is everybody good? All right. That's it. Y'all good? Um, I don't think there's any on your quiz that are really super hard. Nope. You should be finished quick. Is everybody good? Any questions? All right, Zoomers, that's it. A quick day today.